Hi everybody, it's me again. Same day. <laughs> uh, I made a video um, earlier this morning in my backyard. And I showed you the two little birdies that hatched. They had lovely parents, I have to say. I had the two birds that were manning that nest, like I mentioned. And uh, they weren't at all afraid of me. You know, I would be going around and watering my flowers and sweeping the patio and knocking cobwebs off the... Uh, the <laughs> off the windows with um, my broom and they'd look at me and I'd look at them and but the little the little bird today the uh, one of the little hatchlings I guess uh, being new to the world and not very not very trusting flew out when I put the camera up by the nest but apparently we got two little birds that hatched okay needless to say I went to the cardiologist today and I am loaded with wires as you can see uh, primarily, this is a halter monitor that just checks um, your heartbeat. I have what they call afibulation, which is an irregular heartbeat, not due to a damaged heart valve. So um, I, I get flutters and I get uh, my heart skips a beat, stops, spots, stops beating a little bit here and there. And, uh, and apparently, um, the, the reason why I'm on blood thinners is because of the AFib with the heart. Um, I'm on the blood, uh, primarily afibrillation can uh, uh, put you in a risk of throwing off a blood clot, which they think primarily happened October 2012 with me. 12? Yeah. Because I had um, a problem with uh, a colon stroke. I had a piece of plaque or a piece of... Uh, a blood clot or something shot off of my blood circulation and uh, landed in my colon, which constricted it and kept it from uh, getting blood supply and oxygen, which is a pretty dangerous thing. So I was in the hospital for four days and they kind of uh, fixed that up for me. But because of that situation that occurred, I now am on warfarin, which is um, generic for Coumadin. So because I'm on Coumadin, I have to get my blood checked, they pricked my finger. And they check my uh, my level, my Coumadin level, to make sure that my blood is thin enough not to clot up. And um, I have to go to my cardiologist twice a year to because I have to see him in order to have the other service with the pro time clinic for the warfarin checks. And he has to keep a check on my heart because I had a risky thing that happened. So, all right, so this is, a, this is a monitor. This is going to tell them every time my heart beats funny. It's going to, um, uh, let me just stand up. There's a monitor here that I have um, that I have to, uh, and this is keeping track of everything that I have, um, th that my heart is doing in there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a time on there. It gives you the date and the time. So for the next 24 hours, every little beat of my heart is going to be registered on this little computerized monitor. So I have uh, lots, of, um, lots of lots of stuff, sticky things all over me. Okay, so anyway, this is what I'm doing today. 24 hours, I keep this monitor on me. They also gave me a little diary sheet that I have to write down if I see that I have any abnormal symptoms, if my heart hurts me, uh, anything that I do, like I'm going to be getting on the treadmill, I'm going to be, you know, knocking it out there. So they should know that my heart's going to be probably bumping faster because I'm on the treadmill and I have to let them I'm on the treadmill. So if they want to see the diary, they want to get the computer chip tomorrow. After I take all this off me, it is a little itchy. I am going to have an echocardiogram. I know on the other video I said EKG, but it's not EKG. It's an echocardiogram where they have a live um, vi uh, visual of the beating of the heart and of the heart valve. So I will be doing that tomorrow. They have a, a scan that they go around your heart, your rib cage, and they get ang different angles of the heart and they uh, see how it's physically beating. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. It's pretty much routine. Um, I told them that, you know, that I'm on the, um, the pound of cure diet. I said I've been on pretty much food like that 
pretty regular ever since I read the Agent 2 Diet book, which I did a video on, which is primarily the same thing. It's all veggies and, uh, and uh, no meat, no meat products, no eggs. Kind of almost like a vegan diet, but they are saying in the Engine 2 Diet and in the Pond of Cure Diet book, it's pretty much the same thing. You just do it in any fashion that is comfortable for your lifestyle, as long as you stay within the limits of lots of vegetables and seeds and nuts and fruits, uh, and very little meat and egg, you're doing better. You're doing better. Uh, so I gave up dairy, cheese, of course that's dairy, all wheat products, really would love to have a piece of Italian bread with my salad, but that's not happening. And uh, I just eating veggies and fruit. And um, I have egg whites in the morning with a little veg vegetable omelet with egg whites. I have a little chicken. Uh, I'll buy a rotisserie chicken and I'll, that'll last me pretty much all week. Cut that up and just eat it, uh, maybe two ounces of chicken. And then I take the carcass and I make my own chicken stock with it in the crock pot. And then I take all my veggies, celery, uh, onion, mushroom, spinach, a little kale, uh, carrots, anything I have in the way of veggies. Mushroom, throw it in that pot, just cook it up and I have a vegetable stew. And I'll eat that all week. Probably no, between I'd say 6 and 12 ounces. I do weigh everything that I'm doing. So being that I'm so consistent, and being that I'm working so hard to try to stay just with the veggies and the fruit, because they say in Pound of Cure, and they say in Engine 2 Diet Book, and in the movie, that, and, that is, and Food Matters, I mean, all these videos, documentaries, and books that I've talked about say the same thing over and over again, and uh, Dr. Garth, who was Connie Bailey's um, bariatric surgeon, he was at the... Um, at the uh, conference in Vegas two years ago and he did a whole little luncheon about vegetarian food and how staying away from you know, meat products and processed foods is probably the best thing a bariatric patient can do to get lean and to stay lean. Stay lean is a big thing. So um, I told him I read the Engine 2 book. He says that's great. If you can stick on that you're going to be successful. So. I stay, did stay on it for quite a while, and I was losing some pounds here and there. But then I started to sway off a bit, and uh, not to the point where I had any major gain. I did go away Easter, and I had pasta and pizza, and I had a rice ball, and I had some pastries at Easter Sunday, and I had mashed potatoes and corn. But I wasn't eating a whole lot of it. And in between these um, little restaurant trips that we took, uh, I was pretty much on my fruit and yogurt and egg white omelets and, pretty, and water. And, and I only came, I have to be honest, probably about four pounds when I came back. But then when I came back, my stress level uh, increased um, and I started finding myself eating more pasta, uh, eating um, more cheese, um, eating more yogurts. You know, and I'd put a few little mini chocolate chips in it or a sliced banana or something in it. And I says, well, I don't know. I'm gaining weight, gaining weight, gaining weight. I gained probably about eight pounds over my four. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, well, I guess maybe about 12 pounds. Uh, and I did have ice cream. I did have a couple um, uh, outings with friends and there was ice cream served and I definitely did enjoy the ice cream. And I know that when I do things like that, it's trouble for me. It's trouble for me. And then I have to, re, you know, step back, regroup, and try it all again. So I started the Pound of Cure Diet, and um, uh, I've really been feeling winded and listless. And I attributed it to gaining 12 pounds, you know. And um, I lost six since I started the Pound of Cure Diet on the 25th of June. And today's July 10th. And uh, I find myself going up two pounds overnight, you know. And one thing about this vegetable program is that you do go to the bathroom quite a bit. So, uh, you know, my system is clean, you know. But um, 
I thought, what the hell did I gained two pounds from? How could I possibly have gained two pounds? I didn't eat anything bad. I didn't do anything bad. I've been exercising. So I don't know. You know, everybody's body is different. And especially mine, mine is just hell-bent on driving me crazy. It's hell-bent on staying fat for the rest of my life, no matter what the hell I do to try to, to uh, correct it. And, uh, you know, so I told the cardiologist that I was really feeling listless and my blood pressure was low. It was anywhere from 98 to 110. It took me off the blood pressure medication because I don't think you need it anymore. But he was baffled too that if I gained a couple of pounds, why did my pressure go down? He says, it's the way your heart is pumping. Let's put you on the monitor. Let's try to do the echocardiogram and see where you're going. But you have to go to Dr. Sangara, who is my uh, PCP medical doctor, family doctor, and have her give me some serious um, tests because I'm really overdue. I should have had my annual physical in April. I didn't do that because I was in New York. And then I came back and didn't bother with it. I just felt, let's get the weight down, get back down to that, that normal weight. I mean, I started almost 300 pounds before I had surgery. Then I went down, my lowest was about 231. That was about five minutes, and I went up to about 2.38. Then I kind of leveled off between 2.40 and 2.45, and I've been stuck there for two years. And that's still an obese person, you know. And um, so I've just been stuck at that 2.40, 2.45, 2.40, 2.45. 2 and then after New York, I hit the 2.50s, and I went, no, good, got to pull it back in. And uh, last time I weighed myself, I was like 2.50. Then I went up to 254, then 252, and 251, and there was just bouncing up and down. So I'm trying really desperately to get into the 240 somethings. You know, I, I used to hate being there. Now I'm dying to get back there. So needless to say, I'm trying the best I can do. Um, doctor said, um, gotta get my blood work. I gotta get a physical. Gotta find out if I'm vitamin deficient somewhere. Uh, I'm taking my vitamin D. I'm taking B12, but uh, I just feel real winded and I feel um, puffy and puffy. And when I got in the pool, I just barely got halfway there and I was <laughs> ready to sink. But uh, you know, I've been to the pool three or four times and I am getting regaining momentum and I'm getting more and more strong. But just in general, I just kind of feel mushy. So I do have an appointment with my doctor. She's on vacation. I'll see her on the 24th. And we'll get some blood work done. And I don't know. Let's see where I am. I'm 68 years old. I keep saying. I'm not getting any younger. And the older you get, the harder it is to go through this weight loss pro process. But you got to stick to it. You got to stick to your guns. Um, I don't have any coffee, I don't have any soda, I have a little um, seltzer water sometimes if I want something a little bubbly and refreshing. But uh, I'm not eating anything that I used to eat when I was 297, 98 pounds. Nowhere near that. And the, and the portion sizes, we're looking at, you know, 6 to eight, 12 ounces at the most and I'll have, um, you know, uh, four, ounce, 4 or 5 ounces of egg, omelet. Uh, or a protein shake, and I don't have the protein shakes too much because Pound the Cure says not to do protein shakes anymore. Just stick to the vegetables, the nuts, the seeds. Maybe it's the nuts. I don't know. I eat peanuts, and I have some raw cashews that I put on my salad, but I'm eating salads and raw vegetables and cooked vegetable stew. I had salmon patty the other day with a little bit of uh, butternut squash that I roasted in the oven. I eat spaghetti squash. I eat Veggies, veggies, fruit, fruit, fruit. I have some nuts. Uh, I try not to go over the two ounces of the peanuts. That's what you're allowed, one to two ounces a day. I counted out that there's about 15 shelled peanuts equals one ounce. So I'm allowed 30 peanuts. That's pretty much what I eat. Maybe the peanuts are no good for me. I don't know. I'm a bafflement. But what did they, what did they used to say? is a puzzlement. <laughs> the king and I... They used to say the king of, of, of Persia, the king of, well, what was the king of I? Uh, Yul Brenner was uh, the, the king, and um, the Deborah Kerr was Anna, 
and the king and I uh, was the king of Siam. It was Siam. Now it's Persia, or whatever the hell it is now, I don't know. But they used to say, it's a puzzlement, and that's how I feel about my, my, my weight loss journey and uh, my lack of pro progress. So, um, all right, got nothing more to say. I'm all wired up. Ticking away, and uh, tomorrow I get my echocardiogram, and and uh, I'll get back to you on um, on what happens after that. Okay, bye. I know I talked way too much at this video, but you know you've been missing me. Everybody's been complaining. Where the hell are you? Well, here I am. All right, everyone. Love you all. Take care. Bye.